Hello, and thank you for tuning in this evening. My name is Ramil. I serve as the second vice president and political action chair for the Chicago West Side NAACP. If you want to know more about the Chicago West Side NAACP, we are located at 5820 West Chicago Avenue, Chicago, Illinois 60651. We meet every first Saturday of the month at 1 p.m. So without further ado, I want to go ahead and introduce tonight's guest. He is the CEO and founder of Striving for Greatness NFP, Mr. Zachary Granberry. Hello, Zach. Hey, Romeo. How are you? I am well. So that we can get started, why don't you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Okay. Well, as Romeo mentioned, uh, my name is Zachary Granberry. I'm the founder and CEO of Striving for Greatness Not for Profit. Um, our, I want to start kind of with our mission. So our mission is to provide children of all ages um, the opportunities to enhance and discover abilities and aspirations to better, uh, for the betterment of their future. Um, and a little bit about me is that um, I grew up on the, uh, near the west side of Chicago, so the west suburb in Maywood, Illinois. Um, and I just had a passion for uh, working with kids. So um, I think it's probably inherited <laughs> from my, my mother who's a early childhood advocate and teacher for almost 30 years. But then as I got older, um, I um, was working with various programs with children of all ages. So uh, when I was in college, I worked with uh, Boys and Girls Club coaching um, an elementary school basketball and flag football team to also working with upward bound programs like upward bound and then the older i got in my early 20s uh, from that time frame um, i was actually a director over an educational program that was focused on reading and um, in milwaukee wisconsin so um, that's where it kind of started um, where i really had to love <laughs> and want to create and uh, programs for children so um, and then I, I graduated from Marquette University with an English uh, with an English degree and also in Africana studies. Oh wow! So you have a wealth of experience and a wealth of knowledge. Yes. Um, so before I go into any other questions for you, I do want to let everyone know that this is a live show and you can call in. So yeah. please do if you have any questions or comments um, for us. The call in number is three one two seven three eight. 1060. So Zach, you shared a lot about your experience and really how you came to um, wanting to be more active with our young people. Yes. So where did you come up with uh, SFG aka Striving for Greatness? Well, um, it was around 2010, uh, 2011 where um, I was a director of the educational program and we exceeded expectation when it came to having the enrollment but there were children uh, young men to be exact that were you know not consistent in coming into the program so i was trying to figure out why what were the reason why or what or on the other side why were they coming so they would come if i spoke to them or any of the other male leaders that were there would, would come or if their favorite girl that they liked was there but if, they, if their favorite girl didn't come, then it was like, okay, I'm not going to show up today. So it just made me uh, think about how can I get young men invested in, um, in education? So what do young men like? So I just started thinking of different things, which kind of cultivated striving for greatness. And then just over time from 2011 um, till now, just really building it and trying to figure out what we should do as an organization and that's kind of like the start of it and then in in the in the growth and like the development process of it i really start to think like man all the things that i love to do i think that young young people love to do so as far as ed education as far as uh, music and uh, technology and things like that so i wanted to create a program where they can really hone in on their interests mm -hmm. and learn how to advance that and maybe turn it into a career. So that's what we do at Striving for Greatness. Oh, wow. That's a lot and that's some great information. Yeah. So 
I hear you talking about you wanted to figure out how to get the youth engaged, uh, more specifically, our young men. And we know that there are a lot of challenges out here for our youth today. So mm -hmm. what are some of the things um, that are, you know, on the, I guess, the top of the list or the things that you seek to address through Striving for Greatness that are challenges facing our youth today? Yes, um, I think that our youth um, have a lot of diff have different challenges. Um, as far as striving for greatness, what we um, our vision is to build a culture that where the community grows through education, advocacy, and philanthropy. Um, I think that kids really don't see a lot of people giving back, or if they do, it's few, far in between. Um, also, kids when it comes to the I guess the the technical or, or general ways of education, uh, like they kind of shy away from it for uh, numerous of reasons. And then also parent in involvement is um, something too that sometimes lacks. So with what we're doing at Strive for Greatness, we're trying to tackle all those things and make it where uh, we, we get people to buy in to themselves. Because I don't feel like I feel like the best way to really learn is just through conversation. That's the best way to educate yourself, and you just really need the tools to bring it out of you. So that's what we do at um, Striving for Greatness. So um, in the educational piece, um, I'm excited that we're gearing up um, this fall to do our first program, where it's focused around young teens, and it's called the Next Gen um, Entrepreneurs Group, where we're going to teach them how to be entrepreneurs. But prior to learning how to create your own business, you need to understand money. And I think that's something too for American not American. just kids, but just in general that- uh, Their parents as well. Right, that um, I know when I was growing up, I, I got like a basic understanding of how to manage money, but what we want to do with our program is go in depth. So you, uh, we're focusing on financial literacy and financial discipline. And that's going to be the first step. The second step is how to create uh, a business. And then the last step is the philanthropy piece, where now you learn what money is, how to manage money. But now you're also learning how to create the business and then how to give back. So all this stuff happens simultaneously and not just you're doing it just because you feel like you have to. Okay. Well, that's great. So you mentioned that uh, Striving for Greatness creates this culture um, essentially that's rooted in education, um, philanthropy. So how are you doing that? How are you creating this culture for these young people? Yes, so um, as far as the advocacy piece, um, we're doing different events um, in the upcoming 2018-2019 uh, year where we focus on what well, one of our events is uh, protect yourself is a campaign where we focus on HIV AIDS awareness I know when I was growing up um, it was it was kind of taboo to have this conversation mm -hmm. but there were artists and actors who did promote um, safe sex or have conversations about HIV and AIDS and I feel like the time that we live in now, it, it's more prominent than ever where kids have access to it, where, um, you know, they can just pick up a phone and just see anything. So educating them on how on what's important because uh, 18 through 64, ages 18 through 64, um, are impacted the most when it comes to HIV and AIDS. And then um, our community, uh, African-American community, uh, are the most impacted as well. So just trying to educate them with that, and we've done that through free HIV and AIDS um, um, testing. Uh, we've also done this, um, done that with uh, have a T-shirt here where um, with the campaign on it says "Protect Yourself." Okay, come through. <laughs> so it's "Protect Yourself," and we have uh, two other colorways as well. That's uh, actually on our website. Um, we we'll probably talk a little bit more about that, but um, pretty much. That money that that we make from here, we, we give some of that proceeds to the AIDS uh, Foundation of Chicago. So we're we're trying to not just walk the um, talk the talk, but walk the walk. When it comes to that, when it comes to philanthropy, we're creating uh, academic scholarships and community service scholarships that we would like to roll out um, also um, in the fall or winter where we'll be giving that away. So that would be on the website as well, and then just more educational programs and our 
like I said, I'm really excited about this uh, next gen entrepreneurs group because it's really building the next uh, the next millionaires and billionaires, but more importantly, building wealth because I want to shift the mindset of of people in general that we need to focus more on being wealthy than trying to be rich. Anybody can be rich, but if we don't know how to manage the money and build it over time, then we're not uh, really benefiting the future. Well, yeah, I definitely um, agree that that piece is very important because as we hear and read um, in the media or your local news papers, mm -hmm. we are lagging. Um, in mm -hmm. many of those uh, areas, especially when it comes to economics. So I do believe that that's a very important piece that we need to tackle. And so when you talk about the philanthropy piece, can you talk a little bit more about how you are encouraging that piece of philanthropy? Because I think that that's totally different, right? We hear a lot of people mm -hmm. speaking about build your wealth and take it and, you know, do your own thing. Mm -hmm. But that philanthropy piece means that you're not just acquiring this wealth, but you're giving back right. in um, some way. So can you speak a little bit more about that? Yeah, um, I believe that giving back should be like second second nature. It, it shouldn't be just something. I mean, and, and it doesn't necessarily mean money all the time or it necessarily means um, uh, uh, a lot of money. It, it can just, whatever you have, it should be something that you're doing simultaneously as you're on the rise to becoming that professional, becoming that next Mark Zuckerberg or the next uh, billionaire or millionaire. So um, I think that I think that with philanthropy piece that we want to that we really want to focus on is just having the kids understand that there are many ways to give back, which is um, it could be it can be through giving back to other organizations. It can also be um, having your own organization, like working together with an organization um, such as yours would be a great opportunity to teach the kids. So that's really the focus, just letting them understand that if you're not giving back, then and if that's not your second nature, just as much as you eat and you spend money on anything else, you should also give out money and give out time because that's some, that goes back to the uh, last question. Uh, I guess a couple questions ago where we said what do children um, you know what face challenges? what challenges mm -hmm. that they face they face um, not understanding the importance of giving back um, how, how can we move forward as a as a community if we don't know how to help one another if we don't know what struggles that um, the others go through and sometimes the struggles that we go to um, Someone is going through that at the same time, and if we learn how to help each other, then we move forward forward in a positive way, and maybe even faster. I, I definitely agree with that, because when mm -hmm. you talk about this subject of philanthropy and giving back, and not just in a way of giving money, you said something very important, which I think people are more willing to part ways with money mm -hmm. than they are with the T word, which is time. <laughs> right. um, <laughs> Which is that to me is very important. Like I live by my self-made creed, motto, whatever you want to call it. Um, if we all did a little, we could get a lot done. Mm -hmm. um, and I truly believe that because I can't give every single hour of the day to the work that I do. But the time that I do have, you know, mm -hmm. I do make it, you know, my purpose to give back to my organization such as the Chicago Westside NAACP because you know I'm a volunteer we're mm -hmm. all volunteers this is not something that we get paid to do but it's really the passion for our community for seeing us move forward collectively as a people um, which is why I feel you know so pressed to donate my time mm -hmm. my skills that I have the skill set that I have and so I really want to commend you for your willingness to develop something such as this to help our youth because I think we have a lot of these programs mm -hmm. um, out here to our youth but it's not building them in a way such as what you're discussing yeah. you know like you're not just talking about um, you know doing something that's fun but helping them to build something not only for themselves but for their friends for their family right. and for their future generations and i think having them to think about their life in that way is um 
a very very important piece and so with that I know you mentioned uh, the scholarship aspect so mm -hmm. I thought that that was very interesting so can you tell us a little bit more about the scholarship opportunity that you're going to offer is it going to be for like high schoolers uh -huh. or how will that work so before I answer that I just I want to give kind of a little I guess background piece of me what what makes me passionate about these things it, I just feel like helping helping people I mean it, helping people is is just one of those things that I get excited about mm -hmm. because it it, it shows just seeing the growth, seeing someone start from point A and getting them to point Z is just rewarding for me. Mm -hmm. So um, I have, for some reason, I got the gift of, of having patience with, <laughs> with children. So that's what um, made me lead into this lane. But to finish out that story about what made me create Strive for Greatness, um, I, I saw it, another piece of it is that I saw a kid in my neighborhood and I was going to work to actually teach and then I seen a kid who was about nine years old and I was going from 630 and I was going from Maywood driving to Inglewood uh, uh, Chicago and I seen him getting up at that time but he's getting up on a bike and I kinda knew what that meant where he was getting up and he was doing something that probably shouldn't have been doing so just trying to take a kid that's that's probably that may be their point A and getting them to point Z. I think that that's one of the greatest things that you can give to people. But to answer your question, um, as far as the the scholarships go, yes, um, it will be a scholarship for. Um, well, right now we're planning to do three. They all won't happen at the same time. But one of the scholarships is for incoming freshmen, where it's going to be community service. It's actually called the Mini L Pounds Found um, Scholarship Award, Community Service Award. Um, which is named after my grandmother. Um, yeah, who's <laughs> best? She's a uh, yeah. She was a um, she was a great leader in a uh, community service, a, a real servant. So um, a, a real servant leader, someone who could follow and and do the work and lead by example, but someone who can also give you advice and who was very positive. So just that's really one of the focus um, that I would like to see kids do more of in. Um, and that that's a way where you learn how you learn a lot of skills. You learn a lot of life skills when you when you do community service. You learn some of the life skills that we're trying to teach um, as far as education, advocacy, and philanthropy, and that whole process when you do community service. You learn how to give back. You learn how to give back financially. You learn how to give back emotionally, and and all of those things. And and then you have a purpose. You feel like you have a purpose. So that's one scholarship. It also will be a teacher scholarship. That's uh, named after my mother, which is uh, Deborah um, Deborah L. Bynum um, Teaching Award Keeping too. It all in the yeah. family. <laughs> so because I'm just thinking of the people who helped me become the person that I am today, who um, who inspired me um, when I when I think of why I created um, a, a business like this. Uh, my mom's a creator, an innovator. She has her own uh, business. So watching that and having the passion for people and kids like I said I think that I inherit that but I also um, want to take it to the next level and um, really touch um, touch different communities so that scholarship will be probably tied back to my alma mater which is uh, Marquette University okay and so you talked about your uh, English and Africana study so really yeah. for students who may be pursuing um, those paths at Marquette or is it really for um, any path that someone may take but yeah. they're attending. Market. So so when it comes to the teaching one, um, that would be for any student who's in the educational field. So okay. you may not necessarily be a, going to pursue it to be a teacher, but if you're in the educational field, you can apply for that one. But as far as the community service, that's going to be broad and open to the public. That won't be a specific university. But um, it will be a um, we're looking. For, we're probably going to have one male, one female as as a winner, um, and I don't want to throw out a specific number right now. But I do have a number that is uh, would be beneficial. That can help with that can help with books and things of that nature. Because that I mean, as a as college students, we know that it was yeah. tough. <laughs> it was tough to uh, you know, pay for the books or your your next meal or something like that. So as long as you're giving back, as long as you're giving back and you continue to do that, then um, I feel like I'm willing to help in that way. 
content. Well, I think that those are definitely um, awesome opportunities because they're not just tied to me giving you something mm -hmm. for nothing. It's really you've shown yourself to be a part of your community, to be out here doing the work. And even when you talk about the one that's for teaching, you know that that person is going on to serve. Yeah. And I think it's pretty cool that you do have it, uh, have them named after your grandmother and your mom because that carries on that legacy, right? Mm -hmm. And that name, um, and that they can tie those to actual people, right. you know, and say, oh, so this is who this person is. Mm -hmm. It's not just the green space or, you know, right. something. It's an actual person. And so they can connect that they're walking in those same footsteps. So I think that that's pretty cool. Yeah, I just want to inspire people to create and be innovative. I, I feel like we live in a time where it's... Is, it's perfect for that. It's perfect for to, to be entrepreneurs. It's perfect to, to build your own uh, app or, or create your own clothing line. And it's so easy now. So people just need to hone in on their talents, their interests, uh, their aspirations, or understand like, okay, well, I like to, I like to draw. Mm -hmm. What can I do with drawing? Okay, I can be an artist, but you know what? I can maybe own an art gallery yeah. <laughs> and think bigger and bigger. And then I have a friend who may draw, and now I can showcase their art. And now we work together and we continue to build. So that's just the model of what we're doing at Strive for Greatness. Yeah, and I think we do need more of that. That yeah. takes away the I and making it all about self. But how can we build something where those around us can also benefit, mm -hmm. which will help us grow, right? Because yeah. I think a lot of what we hear, um, or people, the perception is that when you're giving, it's as if you have to go broke, right? right. Um, but that's not the case. I think about somebody like Shameless Plug, Johnny Cochran, um, <laughs> because I recently watched the uh, People vs. OJ. Oh, okay. And I just think about how wealthy he was, mm -hmm. but how intentional he was about giving back as well. Mm -hmm. So it did not sacrifice his livelihood, you know? Yeah. Like he was able to do what he needed to do mm -hmm. for himself and his family and his legacy, as well as give back to his community, you know, in very meaningful ways. Like, you know, he was like, okay, if I'm a millionaire, what have you, mm -hmm. yeah, I can take some of these cases where people may not be able to afford it, but they, you know, they deserve the sort of representation that I have to offer or the mm -hmm. justice that they deserve. So it's like, I think people need to think about that a little bit more. And I feel like your organization with the young people, that is a point that will be driven home. Yes. So that's awesome. So how can someone who may be interested in um, supporting the organization mm -hmm. or getting involved or learning more about you all, how can they go about that? Okay, so as, as many ways. Um, well, one way, if you're social media savvy, you can um, uh, you can find us on Instagram is one of them where we have two different Instagrams. So I have a I have the Striving for Greatness Instagram account, which is at uh, SFGCHI, so Striving for Greatness Chicago. And then there is um, the clothing line, which I created to help fund um to help fund our organization, help fund our educational programs and events, which is uh, SFG Clothing, um, which is at SFG underscore clothing. Um, there's also a website, uh, www.sfgcchi.com, um, which you can go to. Um, you pull up or, uh, um, and then there's also Facebook. So Facebook is a way to uh, also find us where you can find us at, uh, at SFG Facebook.com slash uh, SFGNFP, which is our uh, page. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, awesome. So, um, you've shared so much about your organization. <laughs> I'm really um, excited to hear about all of the various outcomes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so what's next? What now? What now is just really gearing up for this um, upcoming uh, year for us. Um, like, I, like I said, we have a lot of different programs and events that are coming up, some free, some may cost a little, but um, but it's all to better the community. So um, mental health events will come up where we're, we're, we're 
we have a campaign called um, Cerebral Consciousness that's built around that. We're like a, uh, we're doing more of uh, protect yourself free HIV AIDS awareness events. We're also um, just gearing up for the next gen entrepreneur group. So what's next is people can um, is as quick as next week and start um, signing up for these program for the program oh. itself. So we're looking to get as many people as possible. Okay. Well, it looks like we are out of time. I want to thank you all for tuning in, and I also want to give a special thanks to our guest this evening, Mr. Zachary Granberry, the CEO and founder of Striving for Greatness. Yes, he has <laughs> That's his <a> shirt. Logo. <laughs> and I want to also give you information if you're interested in joining the NAACP Westside branch, or you have any questions, or you need some assistance. This is where you can give us a call and where we are located every first Saturday of the month at 1 p.m. I want to thank you all for tuning in yet again and have a great night.